see there will be good. We would like to thank uh, and the students and uh, arrange picnic the last time to speak. No power. So we would like to thank the students of this uh, KLC University and uh, we are thankful to the authorities of this university for giving us this uh, opportunity to interact with you all, to share our experience with you. So today uh, very quickly I would like to present we are very short period to discuss we are doing it well. So my topic of today's presentation is how did life get here by design or by chance? We all are living beings, right? So question is how life originated on this planet? So we have many theories uh, in past, but uh, the most prominent one dominating for last uh, more than 150 years is the Darwinian evolution theory. So it claims that uh, life originated from chance combination of dead chemicals. There is no design in earth. There is no need of any being. It is just happened by chance. So we would like to discuss what is the situation and uh, our uh, spiritual masters we are Inducted to them by their grace only, we can present something valuable here. Oh, Magyana Timirandas, Gyananjan Salakaya, Chakshu, Mulitame, Trasmesi, Gurave, Namaha. During you know, our PhD and our studies in IIT Kharagpur, uh, you know, myself and we have our friends, and we organized uh, and also participated in some of the programs of our founding director, Dr. T.D. Singh. He did his PhD in chemical engineering from University of California Irvine and uh, he came to give a lecture in IIT Kharagpur on the, the conference title was Aging and Dying. We are all getting age, becoming old and going towards death. So, you know, how uh, we can, you know, treat such a person who is on the verge of death. Shall we allow him to be killed by some you know, injection because he is born into society? Or we can have some you know, rules and some kind of consideration. What life is, we must understand. That is our discussion. And he established by his presentation that life cannot be a transformation of chemicals, rather, life is a divine principle, and we must not, what you can say, misuse life, or we can we don't have right, uh, right to take somebody's life. So, like that, he given many examples, and he disappeared from this world in 2006, and he guided us to his daughter. Uh, Sivad Bhakti Madhav Puri Maharaj, Dr. Michael Marchetti, he is a quantum chemist and he resides in New Jersey, America and under these guidance we are doing our presentations and our, you know, all the uh, what is activities. So we have online lectures, publications, if you like you can participate, you can contact Gaurav uh, Silva, he is a VTEC from um, Electrical Engineering, IIT Kharagpur, so he can help you to receive our subjects. So, this is the Guru Parampara of our center you know, in Takata. From there, uh, we travel to various places. So you are most welcome to visit this center for studying such topics that we are going to present today. So, when we talk about science, we say that science is purely based on evidences. But when we talk about religion, we say that religion is only based on faith. 
So let us try to understand whether there is faith in science or not and whether it is a scientific faith or it is a blind faith. Let us investigate. This is the uh, Darwin, you might be knowing, you know, Charles Darwin. This is not the photo that we draw, but some scientists they are putting in their books in, in recent time. That you know maybe Darwin's father or uh, forefather is monkey, but not our forefathers. That's what scientists are saying. So, you know, in past, uh, Professor Miller is a biologist and he did the experiment. You can see the experimental set up here. So, he taken the basic ingredients in that uh, you know, set up and he run the loop for seven days and he observed some of the basic ingredients uh, of the cell like uh, you know, amino acids and few sugar molecules and he got excited. Oh, now I can produce biomolecules in the laboratory uh, by some you know, simple physical chemical process. So, he claimed that in due course of time I will produce all the biomolecules and then combine them and then form the life. This was you know, his claim in various conferences and he was asking for funds and our founding director Dr. T.D. Singh was in one of such conferences and after the presentation he raised the hand of Professor Miller I have one question for you. What is that? He told Professor Miller if I supply all the biomolecules to you can you make a living cell from that? And Professor Miller told that I don't know. Then, all the biomolecules are there in the living cell. Take them separately and combine them. Can you produce life? You say that, is, that I don't know. They are simply fooling people. <coughs> cheating. That you want to produce all the biomolecules. First, you are being supplied. Take it. Not produce. You are supplied. Make them you know, together and make a working cell. Like our, you know what you can say, Silaisi Bhaktivedanta and also argued in a mighty. He told you people are telling that life comes from but it is chemicals, here is a dead body, put some chemicals and make it alive. If you are a real scientist, no, if you are claiming so scientific, then put some chemicals, make even bacteria alive, then you think that you are really a scientist, what you are claiming is right. So, recently, uh, a scientist talking about fine tuning, you know, fine tuning universe, there are many constants you can see, and there are um, very, what you can say, finely, what you can say, adjusted numbers. If you vary those numbers, even at the decimal level, you will find that the entire nature of this universe will be different. That means you you cannot expect the way the universe is running now. Maybe life cannot survive, and so many other problems will come. So, how such a finely tuned universe came into existence without the help of a personality? You understand? The orderly nature of this universe you know, but if forcing the scientist to infer, there must be a being, there must be a person who have tuned all these things. So, you can summarize actually Darwin's evolution theory in these four simple points. First is that simple molecules by chance combination with each other, uh, um, by chance they combine each other and form the complex molecules. That means the biomolecules are very complex, uh, long structures. So, in organic compounds, by themselves, they come together and form them. First, next is that they become living. Means, you know, molecule to living is a different reality. That is known as um, theory of abiogenesis. And then third step is that in a cell, there are so many mechanisms that life by itself develops all those mechanisms. And then, that single cell, the first cell, by itself, by some mutations, becomes multicellular organism and become fish and become frog, become plant, become you know reptiles, birds and then mammals and human beings. This is the theory of Darwin. So let us see you know what are the problems with each of these steps. You know first thing is that we have you know chemical engineering. We need you know what you say some engineer to plan the experiments to produce certain products that are essential. If the chemicals have the intelligence to produce the desired products, then why do we need chemical engineering? When some living being dies, what happens? The body degrades. It becomes simple. But we never find that in all of a sudden from you know oxygen, hydrogen and all the ingredients that are coming together and becoming a 
nice bacteria or a nice fish or a nice frog. You do find like that? Why? Why it is not happening? Because it is violating the basic principle of entropy. Means the disorderness is increasing. Right? If you leave this room, the it room will not be ordered, it will be disordered. By itself, the room will be disordered. But a person is needed to maintain, to keep it in an orderly manner. Right? So, how chemicals can, what you can say, go towards an orderly nature? That is the question. So, the next point is that, how it become a different reality? Life and non-life. What is the difference? What is the difference between life and non-life? You are from biotechnology students of Can anybody say, what is the difference between life and non-life? Even scientists are struggling to answer this. You are asked this, right? The scientists are struggling to give, give a definition to life. They have a lot of, you know, what I can say, books written on this and there are major problems like the definition they given on classical properties of life. They say, you know, like some reproduction and growth and you know, so many other properties they collected. They given some definitions, but all the definitions suffer from three major problems. Some of the examples, if you take some of the definitions, you have to accept non-living as you know, living. Suppose, for example, forest fire. Forest fire is growing. So, can we accept it as a life? Wind is coming and it is growing further. Right? So, it has some, you know, stimulation to the external you know, response. It has some response to that. So, like that, can you accept, you know, the growth of crystals like that? So many examples they quote. And if you follow some other definition, you have to accept living as death. Like, for example, seeds. The seeds are lying for long, long time without any activity. Can you accept those seeds are non living? This is the problem. So, and the third one is that the virus, some definitions say that it is living and some say it is non living. So, they have a problem in giving a definition to life. But, very simple, you see, the body which has life, we say that it violates the laws of physics and chemistry. A very simple definition. Our director gave a very nice example, Dr. founding director, Dr. TDC. He told that, you know, if you throw a stone, you apply the law of mechanics. So, this has motion and you will calculate where the stone will fall. But if you release a living bird, can you calculate? Because, why? The bird has its own free will. Every living being has its own free will. Nobody can say what you will do after five minutes. Can anybody say? Can any law say? It's up to you. So, life exhibits thinking, feeling and being and this aspect of life violates all the laws of physics and chemistry. Even a small bacteria, even an ant doesn't care for such big, big theories. They don't follow that. Only dead objects they follow. This is the difference. So, life also exhibits uh, negentropy or negative entropy. That's what, you know, Schrodinger told. Means, you see, you know, we give this example, a stone, if you keep it uh, outside in the daytime, it gets heated, right? But in night, becoming cold. But the bodily temperature of different spaces are maintained according to the requirement. So, how chemical by itself could maintain the temperature? To maintain temperature, there is a lot of engineering involved. If there are some mechanical engineers and civil engineers here, they will study in their future, what you can say, you know, third year or fourth year, maybe the refrigeration, air conditioning and all those, you know, what you can say, subjects, where they will find that, you know, to maintain the temperature, it needs a lot of engineering. Can you say that air conditioner came by itself by some chemical combination? But automatically? AC or a refrigerator? It cannot come like that. Nobody can accept it. But we are happily accepting the scientists are saying that life came by chance from this chemical. But life, it is maintaining temperature. It is doing so many activities. How a uh, chemical can develop such an intelligence to all, do all those things? So this is an intelligent question anybody can ask. So, this is one of the, what you can say, biologist, uh, Professor Michael Bay. Uh, he is a, uh, what you can say, theistic scientist. He don't accept this Darwinian, you know, atheistic idea. He says, he, given, he wrote a book, uh, Darwin Black Box, Darwin and Black, Black Box. So, what he said, that, you know, this example of uh, 
using the irreducible complexity new theory he given he given the example of mouse trap he told see there are these different elements so catch the mouse there is a small instrument available in the market right so that instrument has many various parts like you see holding bar platform different parts are there so can you say that all these parts came by some chance from some chemical is it acceptable to you it need lot of machine lot of work to be done is it not and suppose i accept one of this element k by some chance from then from where it get intelligence to produce other parts from that can you know one bonding bar produce platform cash and other things by itself can it do bar like that suppose i accept that all came out can all this thing just stay there can it work like a mouse trap or they need to be combined in a particular manner they have to be combined right they have to be you know but can say integrated in a particular manner so that it can act like a mouse trap so from where they got that intelligence can we say all these thing happen by chance in a clock so many instruments are there if you put them together it, it cannot work like a clock you have to combine them in a particular manner then it will work like a clock right so this things you know the scientists are asking that you know how you claim that you know this chance combination of chemicals produce such a complicated mechanism you see this is the example we give that you know professor bay also talking about the gears in mechanical engineering we know that you know it needs lot of fine machinery you know lot of what you can say what to be done designing has to be done to produce the gears and these are not you know big gears in a cell these gears are not very you know what is my scale so how such a fine structures came into existence by some chance from this so you know francis crick who invented the dna he says what is so frustrating for our present purpose is that it seems almost impossible to give any numerical value to the probability of what seems a rather unlikely sequence of events an honest man armed with all the knowledge available to us now could only state that in some sense the origin of life appears at the moment to be almost a miracle what scientists claiming that the life came like this he says who invented dna he said that is it's like a miracle so you see in dna dna to produce dna you need protein and produce protein you need dna so which chemical came first in that level also they have a problem chicken came first or egg came first they have a problem understand so whether dna came first or whether protein came first it doesn't work like the linear thing you know just like a circular so you cannot say where is the beginning and where is the end in the you know biological system there are problems there and we give the example of you know this clock and the cells you see in clock there are so many what i can say different elements like gear needle dial and everything can you say that one gear produces another gear can you say like that or one clock give back another clock it doesn't work like that but in a cell we see that one element is producing another element huh? and one cell is giving back to another cell so how this in you know, a different mechanism came into existence from that chemical and adaptability if you go to a new environment new situation your body takes some time to adjust but after some time you feel okay is it not so this adaptability it doesn't you know observe you cannot find this in a dead matter for example we have some computer program antivirus program so it deals with you know some virus attack which it is the, uh, what is the program for suppose some new virus came can this program by itself update itself to tackle the problem that is a new type of attack you need a person who can write a code and you know add to that then it can deal with that so but the body biological system they are uh, self updating they are in adjusting to the new environment but a what is a dead object cannot do so so how this new mechanism came into existence so there are you know, like the uh, final point that you know that is very safe that from one what i can say space to another space it came 
you know, like a single cell to multi cell organism by some random mutation. So, scientists they did some experiments by bombarding radiations on the fruit flies and they observed that the, uh, the leg of the fruit fly is growing from mouth. When they bombarded the radiation on fruit fly, they observed that legs are growing from the mouth. So, some abnormal, what you can say, growth is being observed. That's what we find in Japan when some atom bomb they drop. What is happening? A new human came from there? Human body, you know, disordered, right? The generation after generation they have, you know, uh, disordered bodies. So, some kind of, you know, degradation is occurring rather than giving rise to a new information. So, they say mutations are harmful rather than giving a new kind of information. We see in the dog breeding, uh, many varieties of dogs are produced, but we never find a dog is giving birth to a cow. We never find like that. Or a tomato is giving birth to an apple, we never find like that. Or a monkey is giving birth to a human being, we never find. In dog breeding or animal breeding or in a plant breeding, we find apple give birth to apple, tomato give birth to tomato, and you know this dog give birth to dog. Where, where is the proof for in saying that one species you know producing another species? This is a question. And also in information, you know what you can say, uh, the entropy they talk about that you know, uh, when you have some kind of signal you receive from space, always you are receiving some environmental signals, okay, this is very disordered, but if sometimes they get some orderly signals, they think, oh, there may be some alien there, they infer like that. So, if you even, you can, you know, put one, in you know, a cable in your, in your television and you find very nice, what you can say, signals are coming, some movies coming or something, you know, some programs are coming. But if you take out that, you know, uh, connection, and what you see? From, you know, sound is coming, you know, from, you know, the signal coming from the environment. So that is, you know, entropy, environmental, you know, what you can say, signals. So if you add that to the original signal, then can you expect that, you know, the signal will be producing another serial? There is no serial. Just add this disturbance there. Can you expect it will be a new kind of serial or new movie, some extraordinary movie? Rather the movie quality is degraded by that. So how can you claim that you know by mutation a new species will come into existence? This is you know, a million question. And even the fruit fly, you know, the Professor Dixon he studied that and he found that uh, if you take that you know, small insect to the theater, you go to movie shows, right? Take it to the theater there. And if it uh, sits with you, you are seeing a nice cricket is going on or dance is going on, so continuous actions are going on. But the fruit fly, if you see that one slide after another slide is going, one slide and another slide is going, it is not a movie for that fruit fly because its eye system is so well developed. The kind of aerodynamics the fruit fly is using, it is you know still a mystery, uh, surprise for the scientist, the mystery. So, a, what you can say, aerospace engineer has to study so many books and do so much of research to know various mechanisms, how this small insect know all these laws to use it. You understand? The kind of structure, body structure it has, to fly an aeroplane, you need very smooth aeroplane. How it could produce such a fine structure which scientists are struggling to get, our methodological development cannot produce such a fine structure. What a fruit fly is using. How it came? How chemicals could know such an engineering to produce all this? So we conclude with this that you know, chance theory or Darwinian faith lacks any scientific evidence. The teaching of such a high class unscientific theory called abiogenesis, life including all of us, are a chance combination of chemicals is highly harmful to the entire human race and very existence of life on our planet. That means if you accept we are all chemicals, what is the problem? You know, somebody will kill somebody. Just say I did some chemical things. Why should I put him in the jail? Why should I punish him? I am doing some chemical reactions in the laboratory. And now I did some chemical reactions. Yeah. Somebody may eat, somebody I eat chemicals. So like that, so much of problems will come. Hmm? So scientists they are not understanding when they are introducing such a foolish concept, they never give any evidence for such a theory. 
That's why we say to have a scientific integrity to understand life, science should seriously question the illusionary Darwinian theory and should accept the direct experimentally verifiable facts that life comes from life and matter comes from life. See, where, from where we all came from? We came from living parents. Is there anybody who can say that my parents are hydrogen and oxygen? Can you show any living being who can say that, you know, oh, this living being, his parents are hydrogen or oxygen or some chemicals? Bacteria, bacteria or say, amoeba or anything, any, any living species. Can you say that? Like then, we have no evidence for such thing. But we have uh, the religion concept, all religions, they say that life is coming from life. And matter is coming from life. Even Vedanta, it addresses that the source of everything is actually life, life principle. So, like you are there, your nail is growing, your hairs are growing. So, matter is coming from life. There is, you know, it can be provable empirically and we are getting ample evidence for such a thing. But what scientists are saying, there is no evidence whatsoever for that. So then why we are accepting simply based on some kind of blind faith? Just this scientist told when I must accept. Is that the way we shall do the thing? Or we shall question what is the scientific proof for that? So in Western world, now already many scientists are questioning this idea that you know the chemical concept of life and no, you know, many scientists they don't accept this idea. They want a change, entire change in the biology department. It is reduced to physics and chemistry of the living body. There is your organic chemistry. It is not. In chemistry, there is an organic chemistry department. And in, if you are in biology, you only do the physics and chemistry. Means, do some chemical analysis of the living body or some physical analysis. Means, how much the length, width of the you know, different parts by cutting it. Then it is not the uh, you know, goal of that department. This department must study the life and its, you know, but it's a deeper reality. That's why we say that, you know, biology should change its attitude and try to address the problem of life in a more scientific manner. So this big step uh, in science can lead to a integrity or harmony between science and religion. With this, we shall uh, conclude. And uh, uh, my friend will give a presentation. Meanwhile, I am showing you a small, what you can say, uh, video clip to understand that you know, how complicated is the, the living, you know, what you can cell, even a small a single cell. So you can imagine that, you know, can it come from a chance combination of chemicals? Just have a look at it. So many processes are going on in this small cell. It's not some liquid there in the cell, but Darwin thought. At the time, the biology, uh, the cellular biology was not so advanced. But now scientists are seeing so many complicated things are going on in that. Can we expect all these things chemical can do by itself? So, how much time? So, with this, we conclude our presentation of our friend, uh, Dr. Pursottam Jagannath Das. Uh, he will give his presentation. He is a chemical engineer and uh, he did his masters from IIT Kanpur and PhD from IIT Kharagpur and he will talk about cellular sentience. So uh, we have Dr. Vikram 
and uh, all the students of this assembly uh, and also the other faculty whom we met and uh, uh, they have provided an opportunity to present this very important subject matter at a very critical time in terms of uh, scientific development. So you see, uh, the question of life is a peculiar um, question. Since I am you are thinking what is life. And, uh, but to uh, think about any subject, we need some basic concept or a basic paradigm upon which we build up our ideas. So, do you know what is definition of science? What is definition? The Napoleon definition, which has been uh, propagated more in, in the present you know, uh, time of you know, uh, scientific experimentation. Basically, it has uh, two three steps. First is observation. You must observe something very clearly. After making observation, then you need to make a hypothesis. Maybe this is the explanation for what I am observing. Then after making hypothesis, you must, you must do experiments. And when the experiment results validate the hypothesis, that hypothesis becomes a theory. Right? So therefore, uh, do, you, do you know any theories in science that we have? Do you, can you give some examples of theories in science? Yeah. What? Which theory? Darwin's theory. Darwin's theory. But do you think it has been validated by experiments? Then it is not a theory, it is just a hypothesis. And it is a hypothesis about what? Origin of life. About origin of life. Okay. So it's just a hypothesis, but there are some theories also, uh, like Newton's laws of mechanics. So what are, what are the Newton's laws? Do you know the three the, the, the three basic uh, uh, axioms? First is the inferential that a body is the state of rest unless yes. Now you see. You take a living bird, it will be at rest. Can you say it will be at rest forever? So, Newton's law is not applicable there. It is applicable only to the non living Yes. So, therefore, Newton's law has its limitation when it comes to a biological algorithm. So, therefore, all our laws of physics and chemistry were applicable because we have definitions. But, in the progress of science, in the human science, there are different types of scientists. I can mention there is a one term from Paul Goyde, who is very, very popular, very strong critic. There are others like, um, um, like for example, David is a very well known philosopher, very big scientist. But the question of life was never uh, you know, accepted, even Newton did not accept that life could be explained by mechanical principles. But uh, with the, with the, then came Darwin, and Darwin gave some concept that he hypothesized that initially there were some chemicals, and then they combined somehow, and then there was some you know, initial life form, and we have a complex development from that. And that is known as Darwin's theory of evolution. So uh, my friend has written discussion already in that, so I don't want to go in that line, but I want to just introduce in another the same topic. So in life, um, there is a problem of subjectivity, of thinking, feeling and belief. So I want to give an example. What is the experience of red? How do you explain that in you know, physics? That something is red. Can you say something about that? Huh? How do you say that something is red color? How do you characterize that? Color, no. Straight line. Wavelength. Wavelength, yes. But what is the wavelength or frequency? What is that? What is the is it color? It, 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 it is a definition of wave. Wave has some characteristics. Wavelength is the wave characteristics. And they say at a particular wavelength, human being observes sudden color. But the experience of color itself is not known within the theory of wavelength. It is just a uh, mapping between the particular frequencies and the color that you observe. So the question is, 
what I see as color and what you see as color uh, cannot be, you know, there is no way to talk about it except for a wavelength. And a wavelength itself is not color. So therefore, how the subjectivity arises, the feelings, the experiences, how do they arise? This is a uh, question of science. And that has not been addressed until now. So, in the... Okay, I just give my prayers to my teachers, a humble prayer to them, so that we can have some uh, a genuine discussion on these difficult subjects. Okay. So, this is a central dogma. Central dogma was proposed by Francis Crick. Because in biology there was no theory to explain how the chemicals are behaving within its own context, within its own context. So, something has to be, some start has to be made. So Francis Crick gave a dogma. The dogma was this. You see the uh, genetic material is a DNA sequence. Isn't it? And that DNA sequence was supposed, when, when Crick discovered that structure, he was so excited that he explained, I have found the secret of life. He was announcing everyone. Now I got the secret of life. So if I ask one of you, do you know what is the secret of life? What defines life? You know, how can you reduce life to its most simplest principles? What will be your answer? <coughs> can you say something? Does it appeal to you that DNA will be the most simple? From DNA, you can construct the whole living body. Is it possible? But Francis Crick, he thought it, it may be. And so, he gave a mechanistic concept, and that is known as central dogma. Now, do you know what is the mechanism? Do you know what is mechanism? It means a linear causality. You first take, you start, you start with some, some material, and from law of physics chemistry, you get some next stage, and from that, again using law, natural laws, you get the next stage. Like that, you can develop a linear sequence. So, if you can identify the most fundamental basic chemical element, and from that, if you construct law of physics chemistry, and arrive at a cell, that will be the explanation of biology within uh, mechanistic or mechanical concepts. So now Darwin paradigm, if it has to hold, it must come to that kind of experimental necessity. And now what happened? The central tower became so popular that uh, they saw they thought DNA was in the light and it had to be three points. General transfers, special transfers, and unknown transfers. Now what it means is information is, is transferred only from DNA to protein or DNA to DNA or DNA to RNA. So this is known as general transfer and this is observed in every cell. The DNA has some role to play in each and every constituent of the cell. This is true. Now the second component is that the RNA, information travels from RNA to DNA, RNA to RNA and RNA to protein. And this is observed in some special cases. Francis Crick thought it may not be so widely in nature, but if it is found widely, it will have a very great consequences for uh, molecular biology. But he categorized another category, which is an unknown transfer. That means in DNA, all the information is uh, completely like hardwired, and DNA is like unchangeable. Because one, when one DNA changes, it goes from one uh, parent to the next daughter cell, then the DNA is intact. So therefore, it says somehow DNA is unchangeable. It, 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 it must be, you know, uh, like hardwired. So that's why it, it categorizes something known as unknown transfer. For other, or in other words, proteins cannot transfer information to DNA or to the RNA. Or that means the DNA is, you know, like a like a hardwired structure. So then uh, he says, if in the due course of biological experimentation, it is found that even if one case of unknown transfer is found, then the whole intellectual basis of the molecular biology will be shaken. So that was 1958, and a lot of debates are there, and um, I, I have this it's a big topic, so I don't want to go into many debates, but I will just raise one or two you know, examples. So you know, in the um, Shapiro, Shapiro worked with uh, Barbara McClintock, who was Nobel Prize, for the discovery of jumping genes uh, in the case of maize. The maize, the maize is very commonly grown in Mexico and also in the United States. So there's a lot of experiments on that. So even in the maize, the particular seed 
generally it has yellow colors, but suddenly it may be different colors, like dark yellow or very light yellow or something. So that coloration depends upon a particular gene sequence. So then what happened? They found that uh, the gene sequence, uh, there is some kind of a realignment in the genetic structure. And so because of that, the particular seed position will be changed. So if you change the, the DNA sequence from uh, that form, which is I mean, uh, producing that color, from so one, one place to another place, the seed will be of change. So now, uh, the general concept was that the DNA changes occur only by mutation or by no other, by, 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 sorry, by accidents. But it does not happen by a natural process between the cell. But Barbara Matthew talked, she argued very strongly and she has uh, produced a lot of experiments about the mutations. And she said mutations don't lead to some you know, a very uh, regular kind of you know, uh, differentiation within the DNA. But that, in, in that way she has shown by you know, a nuclear protein argument that actually it is a directed process. That means the cellular machinery directs even the, the DNA to produce, uh, to, to give results according to what it, it means. So therefore, so for many examples like this, the central dogma has become almost extinct. Although many biologists still want to you know, accept that, but really from the mechanistic concept, that idea has been extremely challenged at its fundamental adoption. So, therefore we have to say that DNA cannot be just a description of the life in its fullness. You can take another example. You see, there is a single cell. How the life grows? Does life grow by, by aggregation of chemicals? No. In actual observation, there is a gyron, single cell, that differentiates into two, then four, and in the entire you know, uh, development stage of the living organism, there is a pattern to it. And it is growing by differentiation and by uh, from one to like from, from one to the next, and then the whole body is developing. But it is not that chemicals are just, you know, they are coming through one chemical, but they are not coming as a accumulation. So the logic of life is in this way very distinct from that of a machine. So therefore, the question comes is when the fully developed algorithm is concerned, there are different types of cells in a multicellular being. There are bone cells, there are lung cells, there are heart cells, brain cells, and all of these are very, very differentiated structures. So now, how the same DNA produces so many different structures within the cell, within the body. So how come, is, because the DNA is isolate, it is just a molecule. It does not produce any living system outside the cellular context. But within the cellular context, it is so functional, it is a very complex structure, and it is producing outputs, which are of biological density. But outside it is not means so. And further, when the growth is there, then we say it is, it is pluripotent. Then the cell is pluripotent. It is not only multi, it is unipotent. That means it is not producing only cells of the same type. It is producing cells of various types. And what is the answer in, you know, uh, scientific you know, theory? Of course, we have done experiments, a lot of data is there, the tsunami data is there, but we lack a theory of biology. And therefore, many scientists, like uh, many papers have been published, and I can quote one or two, he says, we have no theory of value. We have some theory of this chemistry, so I wish you can destroy machines, but we have no theory of value. So then, what it means is, like Shapiro says, one of the research goals of 21st century will be to, in, to investigate and to discover the basic principles underlying the cell. What guides the cell? So because the cell is not a static substance, the cell is actually a very restless, dynamic milieu of you know, entities. The cellular motive is not just, it is actually metabolism, anabolism and catabolism. And what is metabolism? Metabolism consists of catabolism and anabolism. And when meta and, uh, anabolism means self-construction. It is constructing itself. The construction is not from outside. 
uh, similarly the, uh, the destruction of a cell structure, catabolism, is also its own you know, uh, mechanism, its own inner mechanism. So it is not an external process that is, that is directing that to work in that way, but the cell itself has the potency to do that work. And in this way, the metabolic activity is going on. So therefore, to explain this restless, dynamic milieu of you know, activities, we need a very, you know, what to say, not only a vast domain of knowledge, but also a conceptual domain of physics. The concept of physics and chemistry defining nuclear laws and it, our matter are not sufficient because life is, is exhibiting some additional characteristics. Which means it is a cognizant reality. Cognizant means there is identity, there is a context and there is a concept. So in that regard, since we have another 10 minutes, I just uh, okay, maybe one of the things that we discuss here. Yes. So as far as because I discuss DNA, so now since information is not complete, the complete is determined by DNA, so what is the new you know, phase of biology that is you know, coming up? And that's what uh, Shapiro has said. Is categorized into three categories. Information must be not only genetic, but also epigenetic and computational story. So you know what is epigenetics? Do you know what is epigenetics? I mean, epi means not only the DNA, but the extra levels. Means cell organelles, sometimes with uh, the chromatic complexes, which are, uh, which are transferable I mean, by heredity. So when you see uh, the generations, then it is not only the DNA which will be transferred to some other methods, but also transferred. So those epigenetic contributions also will take into consideration. Like now, for example, we are saying that the chromatic complexes determine the visual protein in the behaviors. And secondly, there are also things called junk DNAs, which were considered to be almost vestigial of no use for information paradigm. But now they are saying this junk DNA has you know, uh, 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 some roles because the DNA is not just a long chain of molecule, but it's a structure. So it has a special conformal structure. And the DNA has folding, and that folding also has some information to convey. So in other words, DNA is very important for cellular activities, but DNA by itself does not determine the whole cell. So this is a new phase of biology. And then uh, I want to discuss so this one is a small slide. So because living entities have concepts like a self. Do you, do you think you have a self? I mean an identity. This is me. This is my hand. This is my hand. And I must not allow my hand to be damaged in the, the wall. So do you think some concept is necessary for that? So question is how does such concepts arise within the uh, living context in the cell, in the other, in the, in the within matter, the field is coming from matter, how such concepts are arising? This is the first question. Then, uh, biogenetic coding system. That means, if the DNA or the genetic material are supposed to complete the mind, the phenotype, do you know what is phenotype? Do you know what is phenotype? <coughs> phenotype means the body. Right? Yes, the morphology. And what is the genotype? The genetics. So if the genotype completely determines the phenotype, then the question is, what is the how that map occurs? It's like if you make a program and if you put it into a machine, then if you draw the more logic, you can say uh, this machine works in this way because of the program. But if it is a, that if it is programmed with the genes, how that gene is producing an output called the body. So this is a very big subject and it is almost unknown. Then another thing is that if it, if it if at all it was possible, then how nature did it? Because in nature, there is in nature there is no choice according to the science. In, in living beings there is choice. But in nature, there's no question of choice. So how the molecule shows the wonderful specific and functional order that is present in the reality. So some of these questions are you know, 
there and um, so you know border side is wrong render the star theory and also normal condition theory so you know what is difference between uh, random person order chance and order what is difference order means which can be explained by physics chemistry you put some laws uh, and you can uh, reduce the information within those laws so i suppose you want to study gravity in different places then you may study uh, without the law then it may become a commercial but if you know the gravitational law just apply the gravity law and you can say what is happening in different uh, you know, uh, test cases so the information is reduced to a basic principle and when it is not possible can you say it is random highly complex but even these two criteria are not sufficient to explain the biological functionality why because biological things are not random they are very specific structures they are very very you know, functional they produce functional outputs it is not happening i mean living systems are not uh, found randomly in the universe they are found in the regular structures like a human person a bacterial entity or something like that so where does this additional complexity is coming from this is a lacking area of science so the main simple question what connects the matter which is within the cell what is the connection that both everything is connected to be a what is a living polymer entity this is the question of biology million dollar question if this question is answered then biology will be This is one of the very paper that I have published in the article description. Okay, so you know Aristotle long before discussed this problem, causality principle. So you know what is causality principle? Do you know what is cause and effect? Okay, I have only found two. Causality means causality means what you must start with and what are the laws which combine them to produce the output. Like a watch, you must start with some you know dial, some you know, battery, some connections, nuts, bolts, springs, and then you must combine them according to a particular law. And when you combine that, then you get the output of this watch. Now apply that for a living being. What you must start with? What are the ingredients that you must start with? And then what are the laws that you combine them and you get a cell or a living being? This is the question of causality principle. So now modern science accepts only the material cause and efficient cause. What is material cause? It is the ingredients like matter, carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. These are all matter ingredients. And efficient cause means the moving cause, the laws of motion, the laws of physics, the laws of chemistry will be under efficient cause. Only these were accepted in modern science. But Aristotle argued that was not making a wall, a wall like this. And we have some bricks which form the ingredient cause. And what are the laws? Which is the one that the gravity, weight of the bricks, and the design by which it is arranged. But do you think only these two criteria, the causality criteria, are sufficient to explain the wall? Do you think? Because wall was made for a purpose, and what for the wall was made is not understood from that. Do you understand this logic? Anybody understood? No. See the, the Great Wall of China. Why it was made? So the question against enemies. But can you understand that simply by seeing that these enemies bricks and some laws of gravity? So that means the purpose is not understandable from simply matter and the design in the equation. So he said this additional cause, which is the final cause, the purpose. In artifacts, machines, 
This purpose is the, it is the mind of the engineer or the one who is making that or using that. It is external to the artifact. But in case of biology and the purpose is within it. You want to be happy. You want to be, you know, grow up into a nice, educated person. You want to have a good job. You want to have success. It is in you. It's not something imposed from outside you. Isn't it? Do you want to die? No. That, is, that purpose is in you. So how this purpose is, you know, manifesting within you? This is the question. So, I will conclude from this point. Uh, basically, uh, the anarchic principle is that, like Aristotle also told a long time before, in living beings, the, uh, the purpose or the uh, it must be there from the start, from the beginning itself. The potential part, it must be there. Like a seed is producing a plant, or a gyros is becoming a true pleasure to go or an animal body, and it is producing consciousness. That means thinking, feeling, and being. So therefore, these symptoms, consciousness, must be there from the start, within a you know, potentiality, like you can see or within a zygote. So we cannot say that context, because we cannot see consciousness in externally, so therefore you have to say, somehow, okay, from the beginning itself, consciousness is associated with all living forms. So therefore, we have to conclude, we say, there are two orders of reality from the analytic point of view. First is the non-living order, which comprises physics, physical objects, chemical objects, and we have our loss for that within our limited understanding. But the um, I mean within science. But in the analytic concept, uh, the analytic category of reality it is the para para reality, which is the living being. And we can it does not follow the logic of matter. So the difference of logic is so what is that logic? One form of life gives rise to the next another form of life. And this is the holistic principle. What is that? Om, Purnamadaha, Purnamidam, Purna, Purna, Udhachate, Purnasya, Purnamadaya, Purnam, Eva, Avasya. Throughout the this principle is observed. The seed is complete, isn't it? In itself. The seed is complete. The seed is not manufactured in the laboratory. The combining many many chemicals. The seed is coming from where? A tree. And that seed is producing another complete. What is that? The whole tree. So therefore, from, from the complete comes another complete. The, the reality cannot be reduced to simple principles, especially in the case of biology, in the case of life. So with that, I think that is our contribution. That is what we would like to say to the, to the uh, And now trying to solve the except thing that we have to the holistic concept. We need a non-mechanical paradigm and here I think the Vedantic paradigm is here to you know, make a significant impact in the biology and we hope it will be a, uh, definitely it is going to produce a wonderful time in study of science and uh, there, will be, there must be a harmony when this principle is you know, accepted and realized in the scientific study. Thank you so much. Do you have any questions you would like to address? Do you have any questions you would like to address for a few minutes? Do you have any questions? Can you understand what we are doing today? So can anybody summarize what, what is your understanding about this Nobody wants to explain? We can explain in Telugu also, no problem. Can anybody explain? So we presented a very simple thing, that is not life cannot be a, uh, a byproduct of transformation of chemicals, rather life comes from life and matter comes from life. If you can remember these two things that life comes from life and matter comes from life, then you understand our presentation. He wants to, because see, all the religious ideas, they say that you know, life cannot be released from chemicals, the materialistic idea, it is not possible. And what they say is supported by our observations. We see that life comes from life. 
but they never see the opposite of it. That is from non-life, life is from it. So, scientists must also know what they think very much, you know, seriously about these things before teaching some faulty concepts to the society and you misguiding them. So, you are going to study biology. So, you when you study this abiogenesis, so you question using the arguments that you predicted and some of you may be supplied your emails and here is e-group called Satu Sangha. In that, many professors from IIT, AIMS and other universities, they are discussing this type of topics with us. So you can participate in such discussions and uh, if you have any questions, you can write email in that group and we will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. And you can see some of our books and our, you know, what you say, uh, member, okay, engineer, Guru Silva is here. He can help you okay. explain about our publications. He is a brilliant scholar. He did make it from IIT Padakpur in electrical engineering. And now he is pursuing his studies on harmony of science and religion and uh, trying to write articles and publish materials. So you can meet with him to know the details. You can know the books. Yes, you can say something. Want to say something? You can say something. You want to say something? You want to say something? Say something. Yes, we are here. Come 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 here. These books are uh, related to science and, and also we have to say some books related to uh, 